Greetings, Benjamin J. from Ben's Trains with another in the series. Well, another motor made out of parts. I wanted to do a quick video on this. I just got this finished and put together. And uh, the uh, frame itself has been in the parts box for, I don't know, probably five months. Something like that. But I got some parts in the mail yesterday and uh, got this uh, put together. So it needed a main contactor. So I pulled this off a motor that arrived, a junker that I bought on eBay. Transferred the contactor and the contactor plate. And as you see, I haven't even connected it yet. I just got it to uh, the wire twisted to the existing wire that was on the motor. New brush plate, one new brush spring, two new brushes, and uh, a bit of cleanup lubing and tuning, a new uh, light bulb, and it's ready for its first trip around the rail. So this is going to be the first test. I just want to do a quick video on this. As I always stress, if you have parts, you can fix virtually anything that Mark's made. And all you need is a wheel puller, a way to press the wheels back on, a 4-inch screwdriver, and a supply of parts. A pair of pliers comes in handy. Anyway, let's take this around and see how it runs. The E-Unit works in this motor. Alright, forward and reverse is working. All right, as you see, that's actually running quite well. So, I've got uh, two mismatched push rods. They are very close. You can't really tell they're mismatched unless you actually pick this up and look at it. But they're uh, mismatched, but they're on there and running. And, of course, uh, mismatched wheel. But, you, can, like I said, from a foot away, you would never know that. Anyway, I'm going to put this on the tin litho rail that is on the de-rusted track. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tin litho cars. So let's put this on the rail. Back this up. Now, I use a uh, modified Lionel drawbar, as you see. And I've got this modified so it'll hook directly over the rear axle on a Marks motor and it allows me to pull a consist without the shell. So let's hook this on the rear axle. And you have to get this thing positioned. And then lift the motor and it slides over the rear axle. There we go. All right. Hook this on to the consist. And we are ready to run. So let's try uh, pulling this consist with just the motor and see how this goes. There's reverse. And it's stuck in reverse. Huh. There we go. All right. All right, it's running, no problem at all, pulling that to consist with just the motor. That's nine tin litho cars, and as you see, it has a lighted caboose. So for just the motor, that's not doing too bad at all. All right, let's see if reverse works. And it does, all right, that's better. That's much better. All right, as you see, it is running. So as I always stress, don't overlook the junk. If you have a supply of parts, you can fix virtually anything that Mark's made, literally in a matter of minutes. And it's just a matter of having access to the parts you need to restore these motors. In this case, uh, a wheel, push rod, main contactor. And uh, you can take two, three, four motors that are just junk Combine all the parts into the best one and build yourself a working motor. So that's not bad considering this was just made out of junk. So I will probably just put a piece of shrink tubing over this and uh, solder it rather than having to uh, replace the entire wire. But just want to do a quick test on making or repairing a Mark's single reduction motor out of parts. So I added one traction tire, a piece of black vinyl tape, as you see, to that wheel. 
and the motor by itself is pulling nine tin litho cars. Really difficult to beat that. Running backwards and forwards. So I'll look around through my shells and I have another running motor. And so I'm stockpiling these motors. I probably have six of these now, five of them I think, I'm not really sure. Anyway, and so as a locomotive comes in that has a really nice shell but the motor is junk, I can just grab one of these things off the shelf, put a new motor in a, a nice shell and it gives you a new running locomotive. And then you take the motor that's bad and do it again. And uh, like I said, I look for junk on eBay that nobody else wants. And then once you have some parts, as you can see, this looks virtually new. And it's just an old beat-to-death motor that uh, I pulled apart, cleaned up all the parts, replaced the push rods, the wheel, the main contactor, lubed it, tuned it, cleaned it up, and it's up and running. It's far from perfect, but it's running. That's the neat thing about it. And as you see, it is pulling nine tin litho cars with just the motor. So drop this into a shell and you have a new locomotive that basically didn't cost you anything at all. Made completely out of parts and an old junk motor. So it's really straightforward, it's fairly simple. And once you've repaired one of these motors, you're an expert at it. And it's just a matter of having a way to get the wheels off. That's one of the most important things you have is a wheel puller. And of course, a way to press them back on. And as I always stress, don't try to pry the wheels off of a Marx motor. You'll either wind up uh, bending the axle or actually breaking the wheel. And once you've broken the wheel, if you don't have one, that's it. The motor is not going to run again until you find one. But like I stress, you know, look for junk on eBay that no one else wants and buy it for parts, even if it doesn't run. Even if you have to pay 10, 12 bucks for it. You know, there's more than uh, 10 or 12 dollars worth of parts in these motors. You get the brush plate, the wheels, the bearings, the push rods, the cross uh, bar, mounting front mounting bar, the axles, the E-unit, the coil, the brushes, the brush springs, the gears, the wheels, lots and lots of parts off of one motor. And out of one of these motors, you usually have enough parts to, fi to fix five or six others, depending on what's wrong with them, of course. But all the common parts are on one motor. And... Uh, it only takes a few minutes to pull these things apart if you have a wheel puller to do it with. And, of course, a way to press the wheels back on. Now, I use a standard bench vise. Just line this up in a vise and push the wheels back on. And you can use a C-clamp, but you have to modify it because if you use a straight C-clamp, it always tries to push on the studs first, and you'll wind up bending them or smashing them completely and freezing the, uh, the side rods or bending the axle or breaking the wheel. So once you have the uh, required tools, it only takes once to take one of these things apart. And like I said, then you're an expert at it and it gets easier and easier and easier. Then once you know what you're doing, you can have one of these things pulled completely apart and repaired in about 10 minutes, literally, if you have the parts to repair it with. It only takes uh, 10 seconds with a wheel puller to pull a wheel off. If you have a broken wheel or a missing push rod or a bent axle, a bad bearing, a bad gear, uh, it only takes literally a few minutes to get one of these things up and running, as you see. So this is an old junk motor. It's been in the parts box for months. And uh, finally got around to working on it. Had the parts to do it with. And as you see, it's up and running. Put a new light bulb in it. Get it lubed and tuned, and you have a new basis for a new locomotive. Like I said, I'll buy a locomotive that comes in with a nice shell and the battery or the uh, motor is shot. Just uh, instantly grab one of these off the shelf, throw a new motor in it, and you have a new locomotive that's up and running. And then you just work on the motor that came out of it and do it again and again and again. It gives you almost an endless supply of new motors or a supply of parts either way anyway just a quick video on this as always if you have any questions feel free to drop me an email ben's trains at gmail.com and as always thank you for watching